So OpenAI just released O3 Mini, and it is their first model to reach medium risk on model autonomy. Now, we'll get into what this means exactly in a second, but first, let's take a look at what this model is all about. So O3 Mini is OpenAI's newest, most cost-effective model in their reasoning series, available in both ChatGPT and the API. It shows exceptional STEM capabilities with particular strength in science, math, and coding, all while maintaining the low cost and reduced latency of OpenAI O1 Mini. It comes in three options, low, medium, and high, high being great for complex tasks where the model can essentially think harder, and low being good for less complex tasks where speed is the priority. Additionally, O3 Mini now works with Search to find up-to-date answers with links to relevant web sources. So now we have Search directly baked into the model. And starting today, free plan users can also try OpenAI O3 Mini by selecting Reason in the Message Composer or by regenerating a response. This marks the first time a reasoning model has been made available to free users in ChatGPT. So of course, ChatGPT Plus, Team, and Pro users will also have access to O3 Mini, but for the first time ever, free users will be able to try one of OpenAI's O models. Now, while OpenAI O1 remains our broader general knowledge reasoning model, OpenAI OpenAI O3 Mini provides a specialized alternative for technical domains requiring precision and speed. So basically, this model is not going to be better overall than O1, but as we'll see, it is surprisingly really good in some areas. On the AIME math benchmark, it outperforms O1 Mini significantly with high reasoning and medium reasoning effort, and slightly outperforms even the full O1 model with high reasoning effort. The main thing to take away here is its significant performance increase compared to O1 Mini, as it offers the same low cost and reduced latency, but a much better score. On the GPQA, which are PhD level science questions, O3 Mini once again outperforms every other model. Notably with high reasoning effort, it is scoring almost 20% more than O1 Mini. While these scores seem impressive, and I mean they definitely are, they are still nowhere close to the full O3 supposed performance. As you can see, the full O3 scores 96.7% on the AIME, which means it basically got everything right, and 87.7% on the GPQA. Keep in mind, there is also going to be an O3 Pro model, which should be even better. Now, when it comes to coding, on the Codeforces benchmark, O3 wipes the board with O1, scoring up into the 2000s. On the SWE Bench Verified, another coding benchmark, O3 Mini High outperforms O1 as well, but not by that much. So overall, O3 Mini High is going to be the best OpenAI model for coding right now. Now, here they have the human preference evaluation, so this tells us what do people actually prefer to use. As you can see, when it comes to STEM use cases, so science, math, coding, etc., O3 Mini is definitely the model you're going to want to use. And when it comes to non-STEM use cases, while O3 Mini is still solid, you may be better off using O1 Mini or ideally the full O1 model. Finally, in terms of speed, O3 Mini delivered responses 24% faster than O1 Mini, with an average response time of 7.7 .7 seconds compared to 10.16 seconds. So this is basically an extremely fast and efficient model that is particularly good at STEM applications like coding, math, and science, and not so good in other general areas. That being said, you might be wondering why then is this model a medium security risk, and what does that even mean? Well, if we pull up O3 Mini's system card here, we can see that they have what they call the Preparedness Scoreboard. On the Preparedness Scoreboard, they measure the model's risk in four different categories. First, we have CBRN, which stands for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear. So essentially, can this model aid in creating some type of chemical or biological weapon? OpenAI has O3 Mini as a medium risk in this category. Then we have Cybersecurity, O3 Mini shows low risk in this area. And lastly, Persuasion and Model Autonomy, O3 Mini is medium risk on both of these categories. Note that they state here, only models with a post-mitigation score of medium or below can be deployed, and only models with a post-mitigation score of high or below can even be developed. So if O3 Mini is already medium risk, then how close are we to getting high-risk systems, and will OpenAI actually not release them or even develop them? I mean, I'm sure they will find ways to make these models safer, but even if they don't, I just don't see a world where OpenAI ever willingly chooses not to release their next frontier model. Now, they state, due to improved coding and research engineering performance, OpenAI O3 Mini is the first model to reach medium risk on model autonomy. 
However, it still performs poorly on evaluations designed to test real-world ML research capabilities relevant for self-improvement, which is required for a high classification. So OpenAI is basically saying here that once these models can self-improve, they are too dangerous to develop. But at that point, is it not already too late? I mean, if OpenAI achieves true self-improving AI, even if they completely stop development, which they won't, how long until another company achieves it, or another country like China for that matter? And if O3 Mini is already medium risk, how close are we to high risk self-improving AI? That's what I want to know. So while I wouldn't consider O3 Mini to be a dangerous model per se, I think we are getting to a point now where the security risks people often talk about, especially with agents just around the corner, are close to becoming a reality. These models are only going to get more autonomous and capable, so it'll be interesting to see how open source AI, which has pretty much already caught up to closed source AI now with DeepSeek R1, is going to play into this. If for example, we get to a point where we have open source AI capable of self-improvement, like what does that even mean for the world? I'm curious to hear what you guys think about this. Now, as you're seeing on screen right now, this is a snake game that was created in literally less than a few minutes with O3 Mini High, with a simple one sentence long text prompt. Now, I'll share with you guys this prompt, but first, let's look at what else this model can do. So, here I'm going to type in this prompt, write a Python program that shows a ball bouncing inside a spinning hexagon. The ball should be affected by gravity and friction, and it must bounce off the rotating walls realistically. Now, it is reasoning and thinking through how to create this game, and here is the entire code for it, generated in only 39 seconds. Here is the result, a ball bouncing inside a hexagon. As you can see, it is moving very realistically, showing a good understanding of gravity and physics. For someone who doesn't have much experience with coding, this was extremely easy and quick to do, which gives you a sense of how powerful a model like this can be. You can even take it up a notch, this guy used the same type of concept, but instead of having the ball bounce inside a hexagon, he made it bounce inside of a tesseract. Clearly, this model has a very high level understanding of physics. Finally, here is the one sentence long text prompt used to create that snake game that I promised I'd show you guys. Create a snake game where snakes compete with each other. That's literally all it is. That's the entire prompt. Like, I think we take for granted how insane this actually is. These models can literally write the code for entire games in seconds. While the snake game is relatively simple, and even GPT-40 could generate it in some cases, this gives you a glimpse into what can be possible in the future. I'm sure we've all had an idea for a video game at one point or another, but didn't have the skills or time to turn that idea into a reality. With the help of AI though, as long as you are literate and can convey your ideas, eventually you will be able to quite literally speak or type your ideas into existence with no prior coding or game development knowledge. And while we're talking about building games here, you can really apply this to anything. So we're entering into some truly interesting times. Not only are these models becoming more autonomous and capable, but we are also potentially on the brink of developing self-improving AI. Finally, we have Sam Altman stating that they have one more O3 mini goodie coming for us soon. I think we saved the best for last. So not sure what that's going to be or when we'll get it, but definitely something I'll be letting you guys know about. Anyways, that is the O3 mini release. I'll definitely be playing around with and testing this model on my own, so let me know if you want to see some of that. I'll probably end up posting it on my Patreon. You can find that in the description or in my channel bio. On that note, thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.